Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Medieval. Last time we completed the Haunted Ruins, and now we're moving on to the Ghost Ship. And if you recall from the last stage, we ended it by launching ourselves off a catapult, so that will lead into the next cutscene here. Now compared to the other cutscenes, that one felt very cartoonish, which is the way they animated it and things like Dan's eye, you know, bugging out and the sound effects and that, for some reason, some worm that's hanging out in our eye socket, I don't know why. Also, I don't know why the bird decided to come and just pick us up and help us and drop us off on the ship, but, you know, I'm not complaining. Captain, I thought you ought to know we have a stowaway on. I've told the men to scour the decks for him. Good! I want that scurvy dog dangling from yon yard arm by his bowels! Is that really necessary? Couldn't we just give him a good tongue lashing and drop him off at the next port? Look! There's not a man jack on this ship who wouldn't kill haul his own grandmother for the silver in her hair! There'll be no tongue lashing! Bring the landlubber to me and I'll tear him a new orifice! Arr, I'm gonna make him walk the plank. I just love the way he talks. I also love the way that his assistant talks too. Can't we just give him a good tongue lashing? Anyways, I don't know, I just like pirates. Now this level, I said that this one would be kind of a doozy and honestly, if, if you have a little bit of luck and know-how, it's not too bad. You can take out the enemies okay, it's really just the damage that they can deal to you. Because even with the magic sword, it'll take a little bit to kill them, and when they hit you, it hurts quite a bit. Now those skeletons that I killed, they will keep coming back if I leave the screen or go far enough away, so those are just infinite respawning. But the other ones aren't. Most of the crew seem to be under the control of a few officers. Without them, they'd be like headless chickens. So these guys in blue, they're the officers. They're the ones that we need to mainly kill so we can fill the chalice and take care of the other skeletons. Because these other guys right up there, you can see, they'll get up. And even if you knock them down, after a short while, they'll just get back up again. So the only way to take them out permanently is to take out their leader. And you can see right away here that they can do a lot of damage. And I got pushed down here. So I knocked him down, but he would just get right back up again, so I want to mostly focus my efforts if I can on the officers. I mean, you can knock them down to get them out of your way and then focus on the officer, but I usually just go straight for them. And they will not respawn, so they are permanently dead. They will not come back. And actually, for this level, I happen to by chance see a part of a speed run. There's actually a way to jump like this and get out of bounds of the level of the whole ship itself and then it'll put you up at the very front or maybe you just move up to the front and you can just end the level instantly pretty much although you won't get the chalice so of course I'm not going to do that here. Now here I like to let these guys kind of come up here and then jump over the railing so that they will be away from me for a bit and ideally the blue officer would not come up here with them but right now he's just not cooperating again that's part of the luck factor whether the uh, blue guys will stay far away from their men or not, because sometimes they do. It makes it a lot easier when you don't have to deal with all those other guys around you. But that's why I remember this level being uh, one of the more challenging ones, mostly just because of the damage that can get dealt to you. Because even with the magic sword, it does take a little while to kill them, but it's not too bad, it's just the damage they can deal to you is very quick. Now here, I could take my time and carefully jump, but I want to show just what's down here which is simply just some money, some rolling barrels, these guys, and a silver shield. So, it took a little bit of damage, but that's fine. 
you just end up at here anyway, so you don't even need to really make those jumps. But it is not necessary to go down there because there are no uh, blue officers. So there's nothing to kill there for the chalice. Now, unfortunately, because of the old PlayStation uh, hardware, or even just the PS2, because that's what I'm using this on, it can't handle this many sprites on screen at once. All of the barrels and the uh, skeletons, it can cause some lag, so that's not, my, that's not the video's fault or YouTube's fault. That's just the game. <laughs> So we'll try to kill these guys quickly to make the lag stop here. Now sometimes you can get this guy far away from everyone else and get lucky. Sometimes he'll just hang around his men. And I find that, for the most part, walking and swinging is better than trying to run around and swing at them. I find if you run around too much, you tend to just kind of miss and also just, just take more damage. So it's kind of better to be more strategic and just calm about it. And here I like to just kind of dash jump. Because also, if I dash, I'll have my shield out so he can take the hit for me if it, uh, if I miss. Miss time things, rather. Now, here we do actually need to jump down. Because there are some of these guys that we need to kill. Or actually, rather, I think it's just this one. It's actually good. We got him in the corner here where he can't do anything. They can shoot projectiles at you, but usually they only do that if you're kind of staying far away from them. And we're just going to try to place some keep away here and just run past these guys. <laughs> Take some abuse on my shield. Didn't really need the health, but I'm just trying to show off all, all the level. So it's uh, actually kind of hard to see that this is actually an exit point. Uh, you actually kind of have to look a little bit. Same for here. It's not really too visible, at least not to me. Now, for some reason, the, cap the captain thought it would be a good idea to uh, put cannons in his ship that are shooting outwards, putting holes in the walls, but... You know, I, I wouldn't personally do that, but then again, it's not my ship, so he can do whatever he wants. Just use the daring dash to get through that in time. Unfortunately, this will put us back up here, and you see these guys, they do just keep respawning, so we're just going to leave them behind. Here, just make sure you hold the jump buttons that you get your maximum height. I recommend not trying to shortcut too much, or you might just end up falling back down again. Here we have a split path, sort of, and I definitely recommend not going this way because the timing of it I just can't get. It just seems kind of random to me, and honestly, you have to go across, I think, four or five of these, and I, more often than not, I would just fall to my death and just waste life bottles. So don't go that way. Go this way. It's a, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing. Well, I mean, you can see what you're doing on that side, but the timing of it, I think, is easier over here. And also, whoa, you can kind of use your shadow to be able to pinpoint better on where you are. And I will loop around again in just a sec. I do need to come up here and take these guys out. Oh, are they just going to stand there? Maybe I can actually... I've never really done it this way, but maybe I can just shoot them like this. Actually, I can. I can see the frame lag, but that's also adding to it. Having them on fire is not helping that department. Oh, now they're in my face, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch to my sword here. I do find that you could also just stay, stay in place, put your shield up, and just keep swinging and let them walk into it. Because your shield will keep you protected that way. But your shield, as you can see, can take quite a beating doing that. So you may or may not want to do that. Like I said, just, I'd rather just go for the officer and just take him out as quick as I can. That wasn't too bad. We will go back that way in just a sec, because there's actually one more set of enemies that we need to kill. One more officer, in particular. This is where the other path led to. So you can see, you don't even need to go that way, because you can just come this way and you can get to the fountain just fine. So we're actually okay on health now. Make sure we make that jump here. We need to get in this elevator. Just a little scary, because if you miss, you're going to fall to your death. Pretty much. Most of the time. There's the last officer and his crew. And they're hurting me kind of bad, but that's fine. There's health up here as well. Oh, wow. They're actually hurting me a decent amount. Just die. Alright, good. Whoa. Right, so we can get the chalice now, which is actually up here. And I'm going to be a little dangerous. Just quick jump again. That jump's a little difficult only because it's actually a slight angle. The camera makes it kind of hard to see. But it's actually, it's not, if you go just straight left from the elevator, you might miss. You kind of need to go left and up a little bit. And you saw there, I just kind of dashed up across because I'm impatient. Not necessarily recommended, but 
Now, this, these, I'm gonna kill these guys one more time because I don't want them to come creeping up on me as I'm trying to get up to this book here. And I'm gonna lose a whole life bottle in the process, but that's fine. I could go to, actually, you know, well, the fountain is right here. So I'll actually use this time to talk about the boss that's coming up here. This boss, it's a, it's another boss fight with a gimmick. We will not be able to fight him directly. We actually have to use uh, the cannons that are posted up on there to hit him. And we do that by lighting our club on fire and then touching the cannons, which will ignite them. And you can just do it over and over. And we're going to just shoot cannonballs at him. And I'm explaining this right now because I'm going to try to concentrate more during the actual fight to try to make it not take too long. Because honestly, oh, jeez, they're back. All right, well, we're just going to run past them. Gonna get to the book. Read it. The ghost ship captain is as tough as old as old sea boots. You will need something a little more powerful than the weapons in your inventory to knock him overboard. They do also have a chest up there with a club, so if you don't have one or use it all up, you can get that. And oh, he is gonna be inside for the fight now, isn't he? Oh no, they decided to kill him. Oh no, he's just hanging out there. No, I'm just gonna focus on attacking right now. So if you just find the hitbox where it is, you can actually kind of just hold your club there. But you can see that the timing of it to hit him, it's just missing him right now. So I actually need to kind of change up my timing to try to hit him like that. Now, for the life of me, I, I find it kind of hard to be able to get the timing. Sometimes I'm really good at it, sometimes I'm just terrible. And I'm actually kind of lucky right now because the skeleton crew, they're not getting up. Oh, well, speak of the devil. Don't know what triggers it. It seems more time-based than anything. Sometimes they'll just kind of be down for a while. Other times, when you knock them down yourself, they'll just get right back up again. So I find that it's not really worth focusing on them too much. I'd rather just kind of play it safe and just stand off here on the side next to this cannon. Because for some reason, their AI is not really good at finding you when you're standing there. So you can actually uh, have some attack time without having to worry too much about them bothering you. And I could be alternating between the cannons, but... I find it better to just kind of pick one and just try to time it there. I'm actually doing not too bad in terms of timing. I'm actually getting a little lucky, or maybe I'm just finally getting more used to it. Who knows? Actually, that went very that went very well. Normally, that takes a lot longer for me. And that guy that decided to barge in didn't uh, interfere, luckily. So, we are actually good. Our shield did take a beating in this stage, but you know what? That's That's okay. We can just repair that. In some of my practice runs, that fight took way longer than it should have. I'm sure if you get really good at it, you can get much better at doing the timing. Part of the uh, problem is that trying to find that sweet spot where the hitbox is for actually lighting it can be a little finicky. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to get any more weapons from this place, but there are a f uh, there is one more real actual uh, reward that we're going to get. You are back, Herr Fortescue. I think this is because of my shield, yeah? But I have something else I can give to you. Something you may find very interesting. Very interesting, he says. Well, I don't know how interesting gold is, but I will take it. I mean, I, I, maybe that's kind of a hint. He says, here, take this gold to repair the shield that you practically broke in the last stage. I took probably more of a beating than I should have with my shield, but you know what? I, I've got the money for it, and there's really not too much else that I'm going to spend my money on at this point. Because we're getting close to the end of the game, finally. Now, normally I would end this here, but the next stage is really short, so I'm actually going to include it in this one. This is the entrance hall. Now, you might recognize this because this is one of the um, areas that was shown in one of the opening cutscenes. Those mischievous imps have been at Zarok's spell, spell books again. They're shielded by magic, the naughty creatures. It's kind of hard to tell what they mean exactly by that because you may not notice if you just melee them. But they actually have a shield which protects them 
from projectiles. So all your projectiles are useless against them. So what do we do? We just use our sword because they're just still imps after all. So it's it's kind of pointless, I feel. I feel like that they could have used it uh, for a different enemy type and maybe it would have been more practical, but whatever. Sir Daniel Fortescue, standing bold as you like in the foyer of Xanox Castle. Who'd have thought it? Not us, that's for sure. We's afraid the master of the house is out trying to plunge the land into eternal night. But come on in and make yourself at home. Oh, I thank you. I think I will. I think I'll just come inside and kill everyone. <laughs> at least all the imps that for some reason are left behind here. I think that's all of them here. Yeah. And like I said, this is a very short level, and it's only filled with imps, so it does not take very long to fill up that chalice. And it is not a challenge at all, and we will actually get our health back that we lost from the last stage. Because there is a fountain here. I think it's the only one, but it's all we need. Or actually, we didn't lose too much. Felt like I lost more, but maybe that was on a different run or practice run. If I can jump off, because who actually takes the stairs? Jumping down is way cooler. Now, these poor guys that are guarding the exit... Well... I'd say they, they don't stand a chance, but actually they're pretty good at ducking my secondary attack for some reason. <laughs> I guess it's because it's they're too short, so it just swings over their head. But I needed to come this way first, because even though it's the exit, I need to kill them to fill up the chalice. Because there's only two directions to go. And the other one has the chalice. So this way it's just more efficient. Just like before. There are stairs, but screw the stairs. I have money! Now there, there was an imp who's trying to steal my sword. There was another one, but I'm not going to let him. Here we get the chalice, and this is the room where he was in, uh, or Zarak was in during the opening cutscene. There are a couple of books here. Spellbook. Contents. Raising the dead. Putting a town to sleep. Looking good for the over 400s. Robbing people of their free will. Summoning demons, and finally, card tricks. <laughs> wonder what kind of card tricks he actually knows. The Secret Diary of Zarok. A hundred years I've spent in exile, using my anger to keep me warm, feeding off my suffering, relaxing with my angst. But soon they will pay, all of them, including Fortescue. Or Fortescue, I don't know why I said Fortescue. He thwarts my first plan to conquer Galamir, and then post posthumously claims to have killed me. When I find him, I'm gonna give I'm going to get medieval on his bony behind. I never liked him anyways, always hanging around the court, interfering. Where are you going with that dead cat, Zarak? Where did you find that brain, Zarak? Wretched busybody. Now here, this waterfall, we can't go through it. We can't even cut through it. I don't know what it's actually made of, but whatever it is, it's more powerful than anything we've ever encountered. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's a very short level, which is why I wanted to include it here, because I feel like it would be kind of pointless to include it in its own level, or in just its own video. And I'd rather do it now, rather than with the next stage. Oh, and actually, you know what? This is actually a good opportunity to fix up our shield. Because it is all sorts of jacked up right now. Uh... You know, what else are we going to use the money for, honestly? I don't re really need to refill on the low projectiles, but I will fill up a bit on just the flaming arrows, just in case, because I am going to need those later. So, you know what? Let's just top that all off. I do not need the other uh, weapons. We haven't used them in forever. And that's pretty much it. Now, I did learn that Technically, because we did the Enchanted Earth, which, uh, or the, uh, the Ant Case, which is a bonus level, that chalice in there is, um, is an extra one. To technically get the good ending, supposedly you don't have to do that one, we just have to do all these other regular ones. Uh... Hey, Danny man, how was that so bad enough? I told you it was magic, right? I've got so much here I can give you, but I've no idea what it is. Do you fancy your chances, like? You know, I get the impression that all of these guys were heavy gamblers, because they're always just like, you want to take a chance? It could be good, could be bad. Well, in this case, it's actually good, 
Because we get our eighth life bottle. We'll get the, the our last one, the ninth one, in um I keep seeing some green over here. I guess it's nothing. But uh we'll get our next one and our last one in the next stage. But like I was mentioning, that the chalices, the next stage will be the last real chalice, which is enough to get the, the good ending. Because if you beat the game without all the chalices, you will you will end it, but you don't get the little extra cutscene at the end, which I will point out. I'm just kind of mentioning that now so I don't forget. So we can finally go ahead and save now. So we will end with 20 chalices at the end game here. Because the entrance hall is now done, and in the next video, the second to last stage will be the time device, which is an interesting, sta uh, interesting stage, I suppose. But we will deal with that in the next video, so I will see you guys in the next one.